Welcome to the second episode of our Lancer series, everyone. We'll actually be diving into the character creation process this episode, we promise. But before we get there, we do have some announcements as usual. We've been getting great responses from everyone about topics they would love to hear on our Evolution Cast episodes, as well as different actual plays to keep in mind for some unique games that we would love to cover. So definitely keep those ideas coming. Uh, you can give us some ideas on our Discord server at discord.charactercreationcast.com or hit us up directly on Twitter at creationcast. Another thing that you could help us with, dear listeners, is reviews. We are currently hovering around 50 reviews and could use your help with writing some more to help us move up in the rankings. By doing that, more people can find the show, which means our community grows. And I think that's pretty sweet. Now, we don't have any other announcements right now, aside from maybe you heard about the Audioverse Awards. So congratulations to everybody that won, but a special congratulations to a few people on the One Shot Network. I know Campaign Pod, Horror Borealis, and the Broadswords all had some really, really great awards happening there. So definitely reach out to them and give them some good congratulations because it is so well-deserved. They are all top-notch podcasts and all top-notch people on said podcasts so if you want to see the full list of winners you can go to the audioverse awards twitter account um and they do have a tweet there that shows uh, a link right to their their page of all the winners um i think everybody crashed their website today but hopefully by the time this episode comes out those things are fixed so um enjoy the show we've got some really great stuff coming up and i really love the characters that we made here uh this game is a, a lot of fun and uh, i know we both had a lot of fun uh, making characters uh, and mechs for this game so coming right at you here's lancer with the game designers from massive press enjoy The last piece that we have to go over before we can dive into like our actual character creation here. We're making characters, um, honestly. Yeah, we're gonna oh, make yeah. it eventually. <laughs> Even, we'll get there, maybe. <laughs> I'm sorry, I told you I talk a lot. It's, <laughs> hey, that's fine. Um, we just want to run over like basic terms and concepts for people. So, like some of the language that we're gonna be using as we yeah. go through this, just so people kind of know. Mm -hmm. I've pulled a couple in our outline that I think we should talk about. Sure, but if there's yeah. anything in particular sure. that you think we should, mm -hmm. um, the first one I noted was license level. That's right. So, if you want to explain that, license level is your, is like your level in another RPG describes, you know, your access to materials, how experienced your character is, that's it. Okay. It goes from 1 to 12. Oh, sorry, 0 to yeah. 12. Oh. Zero to 12. Yes. Also, on the thematic side of it, too, um, there is, uh, uh, I think we, we intentionally chose license um, because uh, uh, we did want to couch your player in inside of certain systems, uh, be they uh, sort of political or, or, well, I mean, they're all political, but you know, political or otherwise. Um, your character is someone who has access to these things. 
and and that's part of the reason why they are sort of the you know the 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 heroes of this game is not necessarily because they are um, special in in the sort of like standard fantasy or, or even science fiction sense of being sort of fated or chosen. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, yeah, they're yeah, literally yeah. the people that they are because they have through uh, experience you know, materials and and resources. Yeah, they have they have access. Yeah, um, yeah, it's an important thing to note. L- license level actually is it's um it's very literal. So in, in the universe in Lancer, you have a license for a particular mech, mm-hmm. and the number of licenses you have is your license level. That's it. Pretty good for. Mm, that's pretty um, cool. Because in because Lancer, the core of Lancer uh, is a post scarcity setting, so there is no um, limitation to materials that kind of thing. So you can just print a mech off, three D print it, and that's one of the big things about the game is that like your mech ultimately is replaceable. You can just print it at if it's destroyed, and you always have access to anything you have under your license level. They're your character mm. options. You don't have to buy a new mech if your mech gets destroyed or lost or whatever. You can print a new one. Um, <laughs> which that's the which is thing. another yeah, that's another part of the the setting too. Is like the thing itself uh, that's important is is the player and the person yeah. that they are. Yeah. Um, and one of the reasons we talked about it a bit earlier with the sort of death being an important thing and, and, and cloning being a thing in this, but but not without its own complications, is that um, the mech. Uh, is just a tool. It's just right. a thing, right. and and in a nominally in a in, well, I guess in a nominally post scarcity setting, um, there is still scarcity, and, and in this case, your your character's life. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right, 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 right. Um, yeah, mm-hmm. and uh, sure, that's that's license level. Yeah, <laughs> very cool. Right. Um, triggers was the other one that I noted here. Yeah, so uh-huh. tr- triggers are a bit like a skill in an RPG, but I wanted to use the word triggers because um, I don't like how a lot of games handle skill checks. Uh, and in Lancer, you are going to make a skill check only when it's relevant. Uh, so the term trigger is literally your skill can trigger here and you can um, use it in this situation. Hmm. But otherwise, you're not going to use it. Um, and, and I wanted to make things very, like... Um, not deterministic, but I wanted to make sure that if you make a skill check, you're making it for a reason, that it's going to accomplish something, and that you're doing something that's irrelevant to your pilot's personal experience or abilities or whatever, automatically. There's no like list of skills in Lancer. You just pick the triggers that are relevant to you, and they crop up, you apply them to your role. Otherwise, you're just going to be making um, a 1d20 versus 10. That's that's every, every role in Lancer for skill checks is just 1d20, get a 10 or higher, you're successful. And it gets right. a little more complicated than that. But that's why we use the word triggers. Also, it kind of has kind of a military vibe to it. I mm-hmm. think. Yeah. <laughs> it sort of works. I think so. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the last one I put down here is grit. Yeah, grit, grit's just half of your license level. And it's it's just half your level. Um, but we wanted thematically it to represent like your actual like experience and veterancy as your character. Um, you know, it's a bit like the proficiency bonus in D&D. <laughs> Yeah, mm-hmm. it's a very generalized term. I think one that sort of can be um, also uh, a divorce from uh, uh, the um, like professionalization or something, right? Like everyone has a certain level of grit to them. You know, everyone mm-hmm. listening to this podcast does. It's oh, I can't say that. It's really hard um, <laughs> to get through day to day life. Um, mm-hmm. And, uh, uh, I mean, they're like, everyone has a bit of grit to them. And, yeah. And this but is, it's this like, it's just a mechanical way of, of, of yeah, representing. representing that. If you've been around for that long, you're, you're going to be, you know, you're going to have more, you're going to mm-hmm. be really tough. So that's, that's what it represents. Half very your cool. level, pretty yeah. simple. That's very cool. Mm-hmm. Well, is there anything else, uh, any other terms that we should know before we dive in quick? Uh, you know, uh, so for a, a license, uh, they go from one to three levels. And the licenses refer to individual mechs. So you might say, I have a license in the Vlad, for example, uh, one or two or three. Oh. And then you might pick and choose between those different mechs and combine them in different, different combinations and stuff. Um, at level zero, which is where everyone makes the, the, uh, their characters, you don't have to worry about any of that. So, but I, I would just thought I'd mention it because it, it nice. uh, if you're using the character creation app, it might ask you some questions about that. I'd also say uh, in in terms for just specifically related to character creation, um, <clears throat> background is important. Uh, it's, oh, sure, it's yeah. basically self-explanatory, but but to say what it is in, in, in the context of Lancer, um, one's background does not necessarily need to define 
um, exactly what your character was doing. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but sort of, I, I would I would urge folks when making their characters to think of it more as a like a thematic suggestion um, mm -hmm. as to as to who uh, your character was before they got in the mech. Um, oh. That reminds me, actually, there's one more thing we should talk about, which is the core mechanics in the game. Um, mm -hmm. So it's, you're always going to roll 1d20, and you're going to add a flat number, and then you might add accuracy or difficulty, and you're trying to beat a target number. And I'll explain briefly accuracy or difficulty, because it might come up, uh, for example, with backgrounds. And that's real simple. It is, if you have accuracy, you're going to add a d6 to that 1d20 roll. Hmm. And if you have additional accuracy, you roll more d6s and pick the highest. So, for example, if hmm. I made a roll with three accuracy, I'd roll 1d20 plus 3d6. And if the highest of those rolls was, say, a five, I'd add five to my roll. And then hmm. you might add another flat bonus like grit or something. Difficulty is the opposite. It's d6 and then you minus it from the total roll. And uh, accuracy and difficulty cancel out once one. So if I have a roll with one accuracy and one difficulty, it'd just be a flat roll. Very Pretty fun. simple. And what that does is it means that if you're stacking all these little bonuses up, they can only go so high. Mm -hmm. um, so it kind of limits that mechanically, but it's also a very easy way to track like things I'm good at. And I mentioned it because uh, it might ask you to, you know, certain weapons and stuff might have accuracy or difficulty applied to mm -hmm. them. You can always invoke your background for an accuracy on a skill check that you think you're going to be good at because like mm. I'm a colonist. I get a cool accuracy here because I'm making a skill check about farming or something. You might, mm -hmm. That might be relevant. But I think that's it as far as terms. That's very cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Are we ready to do this? I'm, I'm ready. All right. Suppose so. <laughs> Did you? Yes, as ready as we're going to be. <laughs> <laughs> Did you need to split McGill? Because it's a... Yeah, I was going to ask. So uh, should I... Uh, I'm happy to, to record a little uh, sign-off um, mm -hmm. if, if, uh, if you want. Um, yeah, I think this is probably a good spot, Ryan, don't you yes, think? Yes, Absolutely. Um, Miguel, thank you so much for joining us for this, yeah, no this portion. Thanks for, thanks for having me on. This was great. Yeah. Thanks, Lupus. Of course. Make a cool character, Tom. Safe journey. <laughs> 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 All right. Should we make some people? Yeah, let's make some people. I'm ready. Awesome. Let's make some people. All right. Okay. So, uh, Miguel did have to step out. Unfortunately, won't be able to join us for the character creation process, um, as well as the discussion episode. Uh, but uh, you'll be able to hear his uh, sign off after uh, after we're done here. We're just stuck with Tom. I know. I know damn. <laughs> damn, I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's okay. So I have the program pulled up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and so, like, I think that, it, honestly, if we want to, we can run through, because it seems like the way the program works is to kind of run through it the same way that the book does. It just has the options in here. Mm -hmm. or... I, think it, I think it does. Yeah, I think it does. I, I was going to maybe do it um, the way the book presents it, because I don't actually okay. have CompCon downloaded on this computer. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. We can go by the book, too. I have that and, open as well. Yep. <laughs> uh, I'm, I don't know how you guys want to do it. I'm very happy to take points. And kind of run through it with you guys, yeah. If, if you'd like, Perfect. and then we can kind of do it together. Um, and you tell me if the if the if Comcon is giving you something different, or um, but it, it's it's not too difficult. Um, I, I think, mean, I so. also printed out some characters. Oh, nice, here. awesome! So Hell I can yeah. do it the old school way. Okay, so. I, I love it. Thank you. Okay, cool. Well, so so in Lancer, we um, treat the pilot and the mech a little bit differently. So your pilot mostly will be doing lots of narrative stuff. And the mech is most is almost exclusively for tactical combat stuff. So we'll do the pilot first, and then we'll get get to making the mech. Um, and if you have your core book um, open, uh, if you flip, everything starts on page eighteen in the core book. Mm -hmm. And in Lancer, you start at license level zero. That means you have no license levels in anything. You're just a you're kind of a rookie. Um, and the reason you do this is because there's a tremendous amount of character options in the game. And so by starting at LL0, you have very, very few options comparatively. And then as you level up, you can pick, you know, incrementally the things that you're interested in in, uh, in acquiring. So it makes it a little bit easier for you, puts less of a burden of decision on you. Mm -hmm. So the very first thing we're going to do is build your pilot. And the pilot has two components. It kind of has three components, but it really has two components. The first one is the background, which is where your pilot comes from. And your background does one thing in the game, which is that if you're GM or you decide, think that your background would be relevant in a situation, you can get an accuracy on a skill check. 
or you can get a difficulty on a skill check. So it'll make things easier or harder for you. Uh, and then you can write down some triggers based on that background. And the triggers are basically Lancer's skills, but you only write down the things that are relevant to you. Mm -hmm. So uh, you're going to first get a background, and then you're going to write down four triggers, I believe. I think I read four. Yes, yep. four triggers at plus two. That's the number you add to a d20 when you're trying to make a skill check. Um, and uh, and then that's that's pretty much it as far as the pilot goes. So hmm. the first thing you're going to do is is uh, is write down or roll for or pick a background of Ooh. your character. You, there's a table on page 20 in the book if you want to roll for a background. Which, yeah, I kind of want to roll for I it. Do too. I don't know. I, do too. I love, you know how I feel, Ryan. We did yeah. a whole panel. It was just like <laughs> random rolling from um, various tables. Like we took random tables from a bunch of different RPGs mm -hmm. and then randomly rolled on them oh, nice. and um, made some really stupid characters. <laughs> <laughs> excellent, excellent. I'm going to put hard quotes around stupid. <laughs> I, I I love tables because they are a very easy way for you to get right into building a character, mm -hmm. and they give you a lot of like cool prompts to, to draw from, Absolutely. as well as they tell you they tell you setting information. I think I think uh, in some degree like they are a setting tables. Yeah. Um, so I, I kind of enjoy it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna make a roll here. I'm gonna see what my character is. Sweet. I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, roll as well. Let's see. I what got happens. a 19. So my my character is a starship pilot. Ooh, I got a seven. That makes me a medic. There you go. There you Ryan, go. edit out all of this dice noise here. Nope. <laughs> I'm trying to find a, D a 20. Oh, it's underneath all of my L5R dice. What? Um, Why doesn't L5R use a D20 like a normal game? Nice. It uses 6s and 12, 10, 12s. Okay, fine. <laughs> okay, I got 11, which is Outlaw. Ooh. Nice, yeah. nice. Very good. And if you want to see a little summary of what that means in Lancer, you can actually scroll down and the game the game actually will give you a little, little blurb on each one um and you know some setting information mm -hmm. so for example for me for my starship pilot it'll tell me stuff about starships it'll also tell you some example triggers there and triggers like i said are sort of like the skill list and you're going to pick four of them at plus two mm -hmm. and the game gives you a suggestion for like which four you might pick so for example uh, you might see that for starship pilot it says, get somewhere fast, show off, get a hold of something, hack or fix. Um, and those are kind of my triggers. And all mm. that means is when I am hacking or fixing something, I get plus two. When I am showing off, I get plus two. When I want to get somewhere fast, I get plus two. Pretty simple. Mm. Um, and you can you make see, up your own as well, right? You can make up your own as well. You can write, you can write your own. I've seen people in the game um, write down a trigger that was complete obliviousness. So that, they, <laughs> that was just their trigger. So whenever they were being completely oblivious, they got plus two of the roll, uh, <laughs> which was kind of fun. Um, That's they interesting. Actually, they work very well as like a little action phrase. Like, yeah. Um, and you can see a list of them. I've given a list of example ones on page uh, 26 to 27. Um, and you want to write down four of those and give them plus two. They only come in plus two, plus four, and plus six. And they all okay. start at plus two for you. That's it. So for Medic... Um, they suggest uh, patch, assault, read a situation, and stay cool. So I might use that for inspiration. And if you want to see an explanation of what those example triggers mean, you can look down in the trigger section. It'll tell you a little bit yeah. about them. And these are very much not like a skill list. You don't have to write all of them out. Some people thought for a long time that you had to write every single trigger out and then you know add pl lots of little plus zeros in there, but it's actually not the case. It's just the stuff that's relevant to you. Mm -hmm. Um this is not like a list of competencies. It's a list of things that your pilot is good at. Yeah. Specifically. Uh, I'm just going to take the example triggers because they're really fun. Uh, although I am going to take the trigger, uh, apply fist to faces. <laughs> I like that one. I was looking at that one. Uh-huh. Oh, this is really interesting. So one of them they had um, was assault. Yes. Uh, for mine, which is get a bonus when you're assaulting a position, person, or group of people. Hard, fast, and up close. Ah, yeah. I don't, I don't think I want to go that way with the character, so I get to pick something else that's cool. Ryan, I love that you pick, that you ended up with medic. Like, right? <laughs> I and I got outlaw. Like, that's it's nice. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh huh. It's correct. Good. Yep. That's our um. Yeah, Ryan always plays a, a good guy healer, and I always pick the worst person possible. Oh, <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Sometimes uh, they're uh, a little bit naughty. Perfect. <laughs> That's right, a little bit naughty. <laughs> uh, something else you can do if you, if you have time. Mm. Uh, 
and I, I'm already doing this because I, I'm quite familiar with this game already, which is um, the only other thing you have to worry about your, your pilot, um, like I said, there's a kind of a third component to your pilot, is what if your pilot gets out of the mech in the middle of combat, which is something you can do. Mm -hmm. Or if we have to worry about getting shot or getting hurt, you know, in the narrative as a pilot, your pilot does have some game statistics, and those are on page 28. You can write them down now if you feel like it. You okay. don't have to necessarily. Mm -hmm. um, you'll also pick pilot gear before embarking on a mission. Um, and we can get to that well, once you guys are done with your triggers. Okay. Which, which uh, triggers did you guys choose? Um, I picked read the situation. Nice. Charm. Very good. Stay cool. Excellent. And show off. Nice. Very good. Um, I went with uh, stay cool patch, read a situation, and act unseen and unheard. Nice, nice. I, and, and you'll notice that like, the, 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 the games, they're all very like active things, right? Mm -hmm. I don't want it to be a, a passive check ever. I, I want, you know, you're, it, it's got a trigger, it's got to come up. Rather than the, the GM being like, make this check for me, it's going to be like, I want to do this. Okay, make this check for me, you know? Yep. So that's imp that was sort of somewhat important to me. I, I picked get some of us, show off, Hack or fix and apply fist of faces because mm -hmm. I feel like I'm making like a rowdy person. I don't know who they are, but they're probably rowdy. Mm -hmm. They're a little bit like you know. Um, so, uh, so you can write down your pilot stats if if you feel like it. Not necessary. I think ComCon might ask you to pick some gear as well. Um, but you only really need to worry about pilot gear before you go on a mission. Okay. Um, if you would like to see the pilot gear and see what the gear looks like. I've put everything in the game that's like gear related after all the rules. Um, and it's in its own section called the compendium. In the book, that's on page 108. Um, and you can see the pilot gear uh, up there. And you can see like mm. the kind of weapons and armor you can take. But the pilot gear is sort of, it's just there narratively, or if you get out of your mech in the middle of combat, which is not something I'm expecting everyone to do. No. Um, and. Um, and there are some interesting and cool items you can take. I think you can take like a weapon, a piece of armor, and I think like two or three other pieces of gear. CompCon might ask you to, to list those out. I don't know. I got stuck because it makes you put in a name right away, and oh. I can't do that. Oh, that's so, tough. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, I didn't get past that first page because I don't have oh, any. I under, suppose I can go back and change it. Is that under the identification stuff? Uh, yeah. Oh, it might, it might make you do a name and a call sign. There's a, there's yeah, a before random. you can... You can do a random... There's a little random button on Oh, there, there is a randomizer. Yeah, that's quite good, actually. Yeah. I'll go change that when I need to. That's really cool. Oh, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. There's a lot of good names in here. There are some great names. Okay. That's nice. What was my outlaw? Hmm. Oh, oh I, I, I have a name for this. I have a name for this person. I think they're going to be... Um, geez. Uh, here we go. Yeah, there you go. My, my character's name is, is Lucius P. Abercrombie. Oh, <laughs> excellent. <laughs> That's m amazing. There we go. Um, I am naming my character uh, Liliana Quintel. Nice. Very good. Um, and call sign Rhapsody. Oh, nice. Very nice. Uh, as is tradition, I will not name my character until the end. That, that's no. very smart. And usually I do the same. I'm actually not going to name my, my do my call signs anything until the end either. I think so. Um, is it making you pick pilot gear? Would you like right to now, it's right gear? now it's telling me talents, mech skills. And... Oh right, right. It does make you do talents before looking at the mech stuff, which which I somewhat disagree with. So, um, but I think uh, I don't know if John is working on that. He's I think I can to skip to mech skills. Okay, cool. So I get mech skills. Um, no equipment there, though, but there's a compendium. Oh, cool. Okay, so it's, it's asking you to do mech skills? Yeah. Yep, that's cool. the next one in here. All right, so we're done with the pilot. That's the pilot. Pretty simple. Ta-da! Um, we you did may, it. You may want to pick um, pilot gear later, but that, that's mostly for flavor and stuff. Yeah. Uh, if you want to see that, um, if you want to you know, check it out in the meantime, I believe it is on just on page like 108, 110 in the book. And there's some yep. little tables you can roll there for stuff, but might, we might have to do it anyway at some point. So we'll talk. Let's talk briefly about mechs. So in Lancer, um, your pilot and your mech are two different components of the same character, uh, and your mech is uh, it consists of of uh, of a couple of different components that kind of all fit together. So the main thing in a mech is you're going to pick a mech frame, which is like the core of your mech. Like what is your mech? At level zero, we get one choice which is the Everest. Everyone gets the Everest at level zero. Oh. 
that's it. You don't have any choice for that. It's a great mech. Um, and you can see the Everest uh, and what it looks like on page... Uh, let me find this. It actually doesn't have art either. Page 123 in the core book, um, if you're curious about that. And, and uh, what that is, the, 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 the frame of the mech is like the core, what it, what it does. You have a core ability, which is a thing you can activate like once during your mission. So it's a bit like an ultimate if you think about it, like you know like Overwatch terms, or whatever. And sometimes yeah. it has like a passive component. <laughs> um, and there might be there's some other little numbers there, and and I'll kind of go through them. Um, and, oh, and every every mech has traits which help differentiate it. The Everest has its own set of traits. Mm -hmm. And the way you build a mech is you have uh, uh, three main components. The first one is you have your your mech skills or your mech stats, and those are the things that describe you personally how good you are at building and controlling a mech. Hmm. And those are the things we're going to choose in a second. And those change like the base statistics of the mech, like HP, speed, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. The second thing is uh, weapons, and weapons come in various sizes, and you can only pick the uh, sizes that your mech has mounts for. So for example, uh, you'll see that the Everest has a main, a flex, and a heavy mount meaning that I can put three weapons on there and I can only put like one heavy weapon on there because I can't fit the heavy weapon into the main mount. It's like doing Legos. Um, mm. and, you know, and some mechs will have different mounts, some will have other ones. And finally, you have SP, and SP is system points, and that allows you to add systems to your mech that will do cool things like you know grenades or cover or smoke grenades or what have you, which will specialize your mech further. Um, you following along so far? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And then finally... Uh, the last thing you'll do after, uh, I usually like to do the mech first and then pick this afterwards because then I sort of know what I'm doing, is you'll pick some talents. And talents are a little bit like feats in other systems like D&D. They are things specific to your pilot. They are representing your pilot's actual combat skill with mechs. And they let you do cool things in combat, like your pilot's abilities. And they're very okay. unique to your pilot. Um, so let's, let's start with the mech skills. So when you... When you uh, and you can see, by the way, um, a summary of this on page 30 in the core book. When you envision your character's mech, what kind of mech do you envision? There are four mech skills in this game. One is hull, one is agility, mm -hmm. one is systems, and one is engineering. Hull is for tough, resilient mechs. Uh, they are, uh, it increases your HP and it increases the repairs that your mech has. Agility is for fast, evasive mechs and makes your mech faster and it makes your mech harder to hit, raises your mech's evasion. And systems is for uh, hacking mechs, like electronic warfare. Mm -hmm. So it makes your mech better at hacking uh, and defending from being hacked. And it also gives your mech more system points, so you can fit more systems in there. Mm. And then finally, engineering uh, is for mechs that like to use very high-tech stuff. You have a good reactor in your mech, because your mech can actually, um, it has like a cool reactor in it, and certain systems will cost heat. And so engineering will both incre increase your capacity to fit those like more advanced systems ah. in there, and also will increase the number of things like mines or grenades or other things, like gives you more ammunition, basically, mm -hmm. to fit in your mech. So do you think your mech's like a tough mech, a fast mech, an evasive mech, or like a kind of tricky, like high-tech um, mech? What, what do you think it is? I picture mine as being like pretty durable. Okay. Pretty like... So you probably want to put two points into hull. Is one okay. thing. Mm -hmm. So you get you can get you get two uh, plus two and one mech skill, or you get one and two. That's mm -hmm. it. At level one. Yeah. All right. Um, and I went all in on agility. Nice. That's very smart. All right. Cool. I, I, I'm gonna put mine in engineering just to be a, a contrarian. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, and and these um, these actually work a little more like traditional skills in RPGs. Um, for example, you might be asked to make an engineering check, a hull check. Um, or a save, uh, for example, will still help you a little more in combat as well. Mm -hmm. uh, many things will be like, oh, I threw a grenade, and you need to make an agility save to get out of the way of it. So, mm -hmm. And uh, I think CompCom will do this for you, but it will actually adjust your mech stats based on which ones you chose. But if it mm -hmm. doesn't, let me know, and we can do it manually. Yep, I got those. You got that? Cool. What's, what's CompCom asking you to do next? So, um, I let's see. Uh, talents. It's asking you to pick talents. Yeah. Okay. Well, let me let me uh, maybe let's get, let's go through that and let's do that right now, and then you can adjust it later if you feel like it. Sure. 
so talent talents very simply are the things that you're you know you're like characters abilities uh the things that your pilot differentiates your pilot from other pilots now i i know um you guys have mentioned uh, in the, the pre-thing to the show um that uh you think about roles right like who's going to be the healer the tank that kind of thing mm-hmm. and there is a degree of that in lancer however uh characters by themselves are tough enough and dish out enough damage and stuff to to not you don't really need to have like a healer in your party for example mm-hmm. you can and it's it's well supported by the system but uh you can basically sort of play the character you want to play and be reasonably effective it's very hard to make a weak character in this game you also notice that that character your character's personal skills in the story like their narrative skills are dissociated from their mech skills mm-hmm. for a reason because I didn't want it to be like, oh, I really want to play a wizard, but my int- int's really low, or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so, so your combat skills, the mech stuff, is is separated out from your narrative abilities. So you can always play the kind of character you want to play. Um, so talents, very simply, you pick three of them at rank one, and then you can level them up as you as you level up. Um, and list of talents you can find in the core book on page ninety if you want to see a overview of them. Mm-hmm. Talents might refer to a lot of game mechanics and things we haven't really talked about. So very roughly, tell me what you think your character is good at, and I'll, t- I'll give you some recommendations if you like. Or you can flip through and just look at the flavor or the summary of each talent and maybe see which ones you think is relevant mm-hmm. for your character. For example, I'm, I'm, I think my guy is probably some kind of um, fancy lad and uh, <laughs> and he's a starship pilot, so I think I'm probably gonna pick uh, I'm gonna pick Grease Monkey here. Nice. Uh, I'm gonna pick let's see, I'm gonna pick Leader because I think I need to boss people around. I like it. Um, and I am going to pick Stormbringer, which is a which just focuses around launchers and like missiles and stuff. Oh, nice. So that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, so two of them stood out to me right away. Um, duelist, nice. Uh, for gaining plus one accuracy on the first melee attack of your turn. Yeah, and then uh, tactician, where you gain nice. once per round plus one accuracy on any melee attack if one ally is in melee as well. That's a good one. I like those. Um, now I I was looking through here, and some of them are talking about soft cover. Yes. So uh, talent. The reason that I usually like to do talents after I look at the mech available stuff and read for the rules is because they often reference uh, game mechanics that you know you would have read back. Like all the talents are at the back of the book for a reason because you know I would prefer people to read through the the. Admittedly, you know, there's fifty pages of combat rules or whatever in there um, before they kind of have an idea of what they're looking for. But um, as you can probably see, there, there is enough like flavor and stuff in there that you can kind of get a sense for what you might want to be picking. Um, yeah, soft cover is, is merely a uh, cover in this game. If you have cover, it's either soft, which is like light obscurement, like smoke or trees or something, something mm-hmm. that couldn't necessarily block bullets, or it's hard cover, which is a thing you can hide behind, uh, like XCOM cover, kind of. Oh, okay. Um, and, and so soft cover gives you one difficulty on attacks against... Uh, that that target and hard cover is too difficult. Oh, Pretty okay. Simple. Very cool. Yeah, hard as a hit. Yeah, you can't really go wrong. And you, oh, another thing about this game as well is that if you when you level up, you can actually allocate points from any one of your licenses or talents to any other one. So you can always respec your character. Um, I don't like games in which it's like, oh, I didn't make an optimized character, and mm-hmm. I guess I'm stuck with it now unless the GM. Oh yeah. Yeah. All right, I found my third one. Well, which, which one do you pick? Exemplar. Oh, nice. Yeah, very good. Uh, so the first time I attacked a hostile creature on my turn, mm-hmm. uh, as long as it's within range three, mm-hmm. then hit or miss, I can give it an exemplar's mark as a free oh, yeah, action. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then the exemplar's mark, uh, once per round when an ally attacks and misses, you can allow them to re-roll the attack, and they have to use that second result. Yeah, that's just like the sort of melee... Uh, like. Like I'm an I'm I'm a, you know an honorable knight and I'm gonna challenge you to a duel kind of mm-hmm. kind of thing. Are you thinking about making like a melee focused character? I'm, I believe I'm so. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's that's mostly what I was thinking about there. Fast melee uh, type, oh, nice. type of mech. Oh, I have some mechs rec- to recommend to you then. <laughs> <laughs> the thing oh, I, I can't pick a third one. <laughs> 
the thing I've tried to do in this game, um, me and Miguel have worked very hard on this to make sure that like a lot of those archetypes are represented. And so if you want to make a fast melee mech, I'd be like, well, you want the morning clerk, you want the Nelson, um, you might even want the Tokugawa, mm. which are very fun. And we'll, we'll, we can, I guess, talk about that later. But the thing is, at level one, uh, sorry, level zero in this game, you only have one mech frame to choose from. Yeah. Um, so it does limit your options, but intentionally, because otherwise you're picking from 28 licenses with three levels of equipment. So Yeah. Yeah, that's too much. <laughs> but, but it's very fun to, once you've made your character, go and look at the compendium and be like, ooh, that's what I want in the future. I'm going to work towards that mm -hmm. and begin to build that way. Yeah, absolutely. It's like shopping. <laughs> All right, so I picked Skirmisher. Nice. Um, so I get soft cover at the beginning of my turn. I picked... Uh, hold on, I have to scroll. <laughs> um, I picked Juggernaut. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, when you take a boost action, the next ram attack you make before the start of your next turn mm. knocks your target back two spaces. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Where's the other one I picked? Where did it go? Oh, so you, uh, oh, I picked Gunslinger. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah. Oh, well, um, I should mention as well, um, in this game, uh, the mech skills affect your building your mech, but they mostly affect your mech's durability and skill checks and stuff. The actual attack rules in this game are handled by grit. So you're always effective at attacking no matter what level you are, ex mm. except for um, e-warfare, which is systems. That's the exception, but it's like its own little thing. So I, I didn't want to build a game where it's like, oh, I didn't put all my points in hull, so I'm bad at melee combat. You can be good at melee combat if you're an agility character, if you're a whole character or a systems character um no matter what you choose hmm. basically so don't worry too much about your mech skills affecting your you know ability to punch people yeah that's determined by your talents and weapons and stuff you take cool okay good stuff so you were thinking about making like a like a like a heavy melee fighter i'm, I'm getting mm -hmm. nice okay good. yeah you you will probably want to eventually look at ips north star mechs that seems up your alley i have to go back to the book. <laughs> <laughs> So, As I'm playing with the random name thing right oh, now. Oh, nice, nice. Uh huh. Oh, yeah. That's I found a good name. Okay. Oh, perfect, perfect, good. That's oh, interesting. In the, I, I really like how you can go to the compendium in this program and and sort by the different mech stats and stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's very, very thorough. So, what step are we doing next? What is it asking us to do now? So that was it for for me in in ComCon. Mm -hmm. Oh, great. Okay, now it's just good to to pick the mechs and, and stuff, right? I think so. Sweet. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have one mech to choose, which is the Everest. So you should go into your com the compendium there and pick the GMS Everest, because that's our mech frame at license level zero. And I think you have to make a new mech. There's like a, there's like a button you can do to, to, to make one in there. And if you're confused about these mech stats, um, it, don't worry. Uh, if you want a summary of them and you're a little confused, uh, they're on page 34, and they're all uh, mostly combat there we stuff. Go. But they're the same for everyone right now because they're uh, we're all the same mech. Yeah. If you go to uh, when you create your character, when you commit your character, uh, and you select, where am I? Yeah, I saw like your name's up at the top. Yeah, your then... name's at the top, and you pu pull the pull down down, and you go to the mech hainer. That's gotcha. where you can add a new mech. So I'm going to create a new mech. We select mm -hmm. the Everest. Sweet. Okay. So we all kinds of clicking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> cool. All right. So you've got the Everest. You got the Everest pulled up. Yep, and it's asking me for a designation. Yeah, you need a name for that thing. Oh, we named the. Oh, so we have a call sign. We yeah, have a name, and our a mech name. has a name. Oh, it's got to have a name. Oh. <laughs> oh, this one doesn't have a. Oh, it does have a random. Okay, mm -hmm. I got it. That's right. mm -hmm. It has a great random name generator. Actually, it's oh, these are so good. They're very good. Discourse on the nature of actions. <laughs> <laughs> Huge, if true. <laughs> a senseless act of beauty. <laughs> I think I'm going to go with riskiest assumption. <laughs> They're very good. They're oh, very like them thematical. Yeah. Uh, as well. I'm going to go with uh, silent crescendo. Ooh, nice. Ooh. <laughs> if I could spell crescendo. Cool. <laughs> uh, I, I have names in my mech Tangent Royal. Nice. And my, I think my, I got my name is uh, my call sign is keeps, as in plays for keeps. Well, I almost. Um, my call sign is Valhalla. Very nice, very nice, yep. excellent. I'm sticking with uh, Rhapsody for my call sign. 
Cool. All right. So now, um, not of us took systems, so this actually gets pretty simple. So uh, for the Everest, you've got those three mounts to pick weapons for, and you have six system points to buy systems with. You can you can actually I think if you go into CompCon it will it will uh, a automatically adjust your stats based on the mech skills that you have. Mm -hmm. So if you if you have hull, it'll actually give you an extra repair and four more HP because you have two hull. Mm -hmm. um, if you have agility, it'll give you some evasion and speed because mm -hmm. you have agility. And for me, it'll give me more grenade uses and stuff and more heat. Nice. Um, and uh, now you've got three weapons to choose and you've got six system points to spend on systems. If you want to look at them in the book. Uh, they are on page, uh, there's a big table on page 119 with all the weapons, and then the systems are on the following pages. Pretty Ooh. simple, just like three pages of stuff. And I think ComCom will, will let you just choose from that uh, based on what you have available to you at your license level. Um, so I took a talent that requires me to use launchers, which is like rockets and missiles and stuff. Um, so I'm going to obviously pick, pick something that lines up with that, I think. Yeah. Uh, you'll see sometimes the weapons will have tags. Um, mm -hmm. I believe you can look at that in ComCon directly, but you can also search in the PDF for what the tags will do. There's a list of them at some point. Um, for example, a loading weapon, you have to load it before you use it again. Okay. An accurate weapon is accurate. An inaccurate weapon is, is uh, you know, inac you get one inaccuracy when firing with it, or one difficulty. <gasps> Ooh, energy damage. Yes. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry, what page? Page one, 119. Okay. And uh, then the systems are on page 120 and 121. That's actually what you have available for you at LL0. It's just those th okay. three pages of stuff. Fair enough. Um, and the, the Everest has a heavy mount, a flex mount, and a main mount. The heavy mount will take any weapon of heavy or lower. The main mount will take any weapon of main or smaller. And a flex mount will either take one main weapon or two auxiliary weapons. And those are like small weapons, like pistols. So, for example, uh, I, for my character, I'm gonna, I have a heavy mount, so I should probably put something cool in there. Um, so I am going to get a, let's see, hmm. I'm going to get the, uh, the good old heavy machine gun to go in there. And then uh, for a main weapon, I'm going to just do the good old assault rifle. And then for auxiliary weapons, since I have a launcher, uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick two missile racks and put those in my flex mount. Ooh. So I have these missiles so I can fire out and proc my, um, my cool uh, talent. And since those are auxiliary, I can stick two of them in that flex mount. Oh, wow. You guys have exactly the same setup as me, so you can pick a heavy main and then like either a main or two aux weapons to go in there. You can also put, uh, if you want, three main weapons because you could put a, a, you know, a smaller weapon in that heavy mount if you want. Interesting. Let's see. So primary loadout, I went with, um, so if you have a main, uh, a weapon in your main mount and a flex mount, can you use them both at the same time? So if in they're, the game, if they're melee? Yeah. In, in the game, uh, you, um, the way that the game works is you can either attack with, uh, one weapon or two smaller weapons and then do something else. Okay. Or you can attack with two weapons or, okay. or two, sorry, one, one mount or two mounts basically. Okay. So it's a barrage or a skirmish is what it's called. So a skirmish is just attack with weapons from one mount, barrage is attack with weapons from two mounts. Okay. Um, so I, I kept it simple for myself. I went with uh, charged blade for both nice. my flex mount and my main mount. Yeah, there you go. And so then two, from two swords, basically. Yeah, and then my heavy mount, I went with heavy charged blade. There you go, even better. Yeah, good choice. <laughs> yeah. So I'm all ranged, you're all melee, that's good. Uh-huh. So you just keep them off me. Yeah. <laughs> we should be okay. And then I've got, uh, it says select a system. Yes, now you have six system points to spend on systems. And you can find a list of eligible systems for a GMS. By the way, GMS is uh, General Massive Systems. It's the mech manufacturer that is available to literally anyone at any license level. Um, so it's kind of the default stuff. It's what you always have available to you. Okay. It's good. It's not the stuff you actually want to replace. It's actually very competitive. There are some people who play the Everest all the way to like license level 12. Interesting. And they don't ever get anything else because it's a pretty good mech. Um, but uh, yeah, this is, this is kind of the ubiquitous like Amazon or like Walmart of mechs basically that is run by Union, which is like the, the end setting uh, uh, governing body. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and you can find your um, you can find your 
stuff to put in your mech on page 120 and 121 in the PDF. You get six points to spend on those. Uh, because I have engineering, I get more limited uses. I get plus one to all limited things. I also took the talent Grease Monkey, which means when we take a little rest, I can spend some of my own repairs to replenish some of those limited charges. So I am going to take a lot of grenades, and that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to take these uh, these Patent B Hex charges. I'm going to spend two points in that. Um, I'm going to take some smoke charges, Patent A smoke charges. And um, then I am going to take the personalizations and the custom paint job for one SP each, which puts me up to six. I love this. And you can kind of just like choose what you think is, you know, the role you want to fill. So if you want to be in melee, I'd recommend maybe taking like a cool, like a flight system. Like you can take a jump jet that will let you fly into melee and get in there faster. Uh-huh. <gasps> uh, personalizations um, just gives you two HP. Mm-hmm. And it also lets you get an accuracy uh, if you describe your personalization to your mech and the GM agrees that it would give you an accuracy on a skill check. So you might say, like, my mech's got a sound system in it, or it's mm. got, it's got like, a, I don't know, like a <laughs> extra cooking station or a cool, <laughs> a cool compartment for my dog to run its battle on me or something. Uh-huh. Uh, if a system is unique, you can only take it once. So, for example, uh, personalizations is unique, so you can only take one of them. Or these uh, these grenade systems that I'm taking, you can only do them once. All right, I I got to do it just because that's really cool. Uh, okay, I went with flight system. Mm-hmm. Uh, so GMS Type One flight system for three points. Mm-hmm. Uh, GMS Ava module for mm-hmm. one point. Oh, nice. Uh, that lets me go into lower zero gravity and submarine environments without. Uh, Penalties oh. to my flying. Well, I'll tell you what. You, if you already have a flight system, you actually don't have to worry about that. So oh, you don't really? even need the Ava module. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're good. Oh, mm-hmm. sweet. Well, then so I'll you, change that a, to something. That's cool. three points. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so then uh, I also chose the burst jump jet system. Or do I not need that too? They, they, so if you have the, whatever you have in there, it's going to be the, the best form of that. You have the best form of that right now with your, uh, so your I, flight system. So I can just get rid of those things and get. Something else, yeah, yeah. Something else. Mm-hmm. I'm going to do that. Never mind, come back to me. <laughs> <laughs> what, what you looking at, Amelia? Uh, you know, I'm... St- I, hmm, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty simple. Um, I'll point to the uh, CompCon um, assistant unit. It's an AI that goes in your mech. AI and Lancer are, are very interesting, and I won't really go into it now, but basically it'll let your mech run itself if you want to hop out of it mid-battle for whatever reason, which could be pretty useful. Oh, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. So, you, in a narrative thing, you could, you know, you could get out, you could negotiate with people, you could hack a terminal or open a door or something while your mech is like, you know, defending you. Fairly useful. Mm-hmm. You can't really go wrong with with uh, choosing anything here. I would recommend uh, personalizations. The shield's pretty good. Any kind of flight system can be pretty fun, especially yep. if you're thinking about going melee. Yeah. So I, I okay, I went with the flight system. Mm-hmm. And uh, GMS Shield Type One. There you go. And a custom paint job. There you go. Yeah, the custom paint job is pretty fun because there's a system called structure in this game, mm-hmm. which is when your mech takes enough damage, it has a chance to get destroyed or a bit blown off it or something. And you can roll on the paint job, and if you get a six, it just scratches your paint instead. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> which is pretty fun. That's awesome. There used to be a, a, a real abusive uh, thing with that system where you could like stack them and you could be like, it scratched one of my many paints that I have in my mech. And I oh, no. Sort of patch that or something. <laughs> I like this. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I took personalizations, mm-hmm. custom paint job, stable structure. Nice. And then I did the um, jump jet system. Nice. Uh, what, what are your personalizations to your mech? Um... For me, I think my mech's got a cigar box and a cigar lighter. Mm. <laughs> I, think, I think that's just it. <laughs> <laughs> well, personalization does sound fun. I think I'm going to swap to that. Because the paint job's cool, but personalization yeah. adds a lot of nice flavor to it. Yeah, it's fun. It's fun. Uh, in Lancer, you have fairly low HP pools, and damage is pretty high, so like any HP you can get is usually pretty useful. Yeah. So I think my fer- personalization for my mech is um, as I attack with my blades, mm-hmm. my mech sings. Oh, nice. Okay. I'm oh, that. dang. <laughs> what, uh, what weapons do you end up taking, Amelia? What you, what you slap on there? Oh, uh, where did that go? 
Um, for my heavy weapon, I picked howitzer. Oh, nice. Very good. Uh, my main mount, I picked an assault rifle. And then the flex mount, I did a tactical melee weapon. Nice. Excellent. Good choice. Mm-hmm. Good choice. You may, you may... I think my personalization, I want it to just like mm. have a bunch of spikes on it. Nice. Nice. Okay. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> and you... I think I think this thing just like it looks like a piece of junk. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like it was like put together. Like, do you remember our junkyard wars? Yeah. That yeah. shit like it used mm-hmm. to be like, like I feel like this looks like it could have been made there. Oh, it's amazing. Very nice. Yeah, it's um so like it, uh, you know, license level zero, you're you're gonna have the same mech and you're gonna basically have a very limited list of options. Um as you can see. We're actually finished by the way. That's it. We we made characters. We did oh, it. Wow. Um if you'd like, um, we can pick some pilot gear. Would you like to do that? That's pretty fun. Yeah, I think that that would be awesome. Okay. Pilot gear uh, is real simple. You pick it when you, before you go on a mission, and um, uh, that will be on page one hundred and eight in the book. Okay. Um, you get uh, two weapons, armor, and up to three other pieces of gear, just like stuff you can take with you. It, because stuff outside of the mech in Lancer is fairly narrative, the pilot gear similarly is quite narrative. It doesn't really have a lot of gameplay effects so you generally just pick stuff that's interesting to you um Mm -hmm. uh a fun thing is though you can roll for some of these weapons because they're they're sort of generic uh to figure out like a unique feature here so um for my pilot's weapons i think i'm gonna have an archaic uh ranged weapon Mm. which is gonna be um a old um uh showfield revolver nice and i'll roll for a little uh little feature there on that d6 table let's find out what's special about this weapon it's ancient in design well that's true <laughs> uh and then i'm going to get a hard suit which is on page 110 that's like the armor your pilot might be wearing i'm just going to get a light hard suit that might change your pilot's hp or evasion eh, it's mostly just for flavor there used to be a much more robust uh pilot gear system in the game but we cut it down a lot because it was kind of detracting from the core experience, which is giant robots. Mm-hmm. Um, and then for gear, um, you can find that from page 112 to 114. Just random little pilot things you can pick up. Uh, I'm going to pick uh, frag grenades for my pilot in case I'm caught outside of my mech, and that could be bad. Uh, I'm going to get, uh, let's see, uh, extra rations. And an Omni Hook, which is like a cool future radio. Hmm. You'll notice like only some of this has like actual gameplay effects. <laughs> mm-hmm. The other stuff's just mostly for flavor. I think I'll go with uh, the Combat Alloy Composite Weapon. There you go. Um, and that's just like a generic uh, melee weapon, right? That's right. Yeah, you you can choose what it looks like. You know, whether it's an axe or a sword or what have you. Yeah. So I, I I think I'm gonna keep with my sword motif. Mm. We'll get an extra sword. Yeah. So when I get out, I still have a sword. Nice, nice, perfect. Just because <laughs> you kind of have to. Um, I guess I can go with like a like a sidearm as well, just in case. I want to see one of you roll in those notable features tables because those are pretty fun. Mm-hmm. So just a d6. I feel like I just want to have a sidearm. <laughs> yeah, I know. You, you, totally. Oh, let me roll a feature for my hard suit. Here we go. Oh, variable damage. So you choose what uh, what damage it comes with, right? You can, yeah. Okay. All right, let's see. My hard suit is incredibly outdated or an old model. Apparently, my guy just loves old stuff. He's like, he's he, maybe he's a hipster about super, he, he's old-fashioned about things. So could I? All right, mine is apparently plain or mass-produced. Nice, nice. Ooh, where's the random table? I heard dice. Yeah, there's a, there's a random table on page 108. Mm-hmm. Oh, fun. In the core book. Notable features. Yeah, you can roll them for your weapons or, oh, or armor. I need a D6. <laughs> I found it. Ooh, this weapon is ornate and ceremonial. Perhaps a badge of office. Oh, there you go. So I'm thinking like a, like a very ornate sword. Cool. I like that. I really like including little tables and stuff in the game like that. Because yeah. Like, Gives you prompts to kind of think about your character. I like that a lot. Um, and then for my sidearm, signature range sidearm, um, notable feature. 
This weapon makes an amazing show, giving off an enormous amount of noise, smoke, light, and so on when it <laughs> fires. Nice. Uh, which is amazing, because I, I, I pictured it as a tiny energy pistol. Oh, cool. So you got like a little mosey cricket. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. I'm thinking, uh, what was it, Men in Black? Yeah, yeah. Mosey that had cricket. the very tiny like energy pistol, That's right. but like yeah. it had a big kick. <laughs> Perfect. I think that's amazing. Oh my goodness, there's a lot of gear too. There is, yeah, yeah. But a lot of it's just there for flavor. Or yeah. Use. Patch, gotta have that. Mm-hmm. It's cool, cool. It's more like, you, you know, cool universe building stuff. Yeah, I like it. Like the stuff like the, the, the Sylph, which is a uh, semi-biological undersuit. Mm-hmm. Which, which Smith Shimano Corpora, which is kind of like the anime mech corporation. Yeah. Has like bioengineers to, to like hang out with you this is really cool info skin oh wow mm-hmm. it's got kind of things where it's like i don't necessarily have to write in-depth rules for them because you can tell your gm like yeah i have a cool like info skin thing and yeah you know i use it to change my appearance and walk in mm-hmm. oh there we go if you're ever confused about um the iconography terminology or stuff there's a very good summary of uh of general things on uh, page 116 which tells you about some of the icons and stuff in the game okay um, but it's, unless you've read through the, you know, combat rules and stuff, it would be a little obtuse. Yeah. Um, but you can kind of get the gist of it. It's very important to me that people can understand roughly what things are about by looking at the mech and by just reading about the various systems without even knowing what the actual gameplay effects are. Yeah. Um, that you can, that's why flavor plays an important role, I think, is mm-hmm. that you can be like, yeah, I've got the, the, the howitzer and, oh, you know, I don't know what loading is but i know it's a howitzer yeah no that's pretty cool <laughs> you know yeah all, all right. right so i've got my gear yeah went with a patch uh a sound system nice and, very a, good. and a flex suit very good uh and the flex suit lets me uh it's, it's like a strong underclothing suit that recycles water regen or generates nutrients and adapts mm-hmm. to very hostile environments yeah it's a bit like a still suit from dune but yeah. legally distinct right <laughs> <laughs> What you what you what you grabbed there, Amelia? Um, I am still looking because I had to go. No sweat. With children. <laughs> <laughs> I really like um, uh, the variable, like, or the how it's just like this is a type of weapon or a type mm. of equipment, and you get to figure out kind of what it looks like and feels like. Yeah, very much. For 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 the pilot stuff, at least it was important. We kept it pretty loose. Mm-hmm. Um, the focus is already a lot of like mech choices to make, so you just want to make sure like. Yeah, pick the stuff if you like. Pick it if you, you know, it's not necessarily that important. So yeah. It's more for flavor and, uh, than anything. Um, uh, so so that, that actually is um, a completed character once you have those things selected. That's, that's it. That's all you need to do. Um, I love this. Which is probably not too, it's, it's a little more complicated than some games, but it's, <laughs> and the, the ComCom makes it a very streamlined process. Yeah. Um, and it gets a lot more complicated, obviously, as you, continue playing the game but this is the first thing you'll get into is just playing at l0 at one you get to pick up your first mech license yeah so you'll see um just past everything else in the book you'll find the lists of the, the four different mech manufacturers the 28 different mechs uh and of course you're picking those one license at a time so mm-hmm. it's not like you have to make a tremendous amount of decisions um and if you flip through those those mechs i'm pretty sure you'll be able to tell instantaneously just by looking at them and the names of the things that, that come with those mechs, the kinds of things you're going to want to get into. Like if you want to be a fast, agile melee attacker, you're going to want to look at the Morning Cloak. Probably, oh, yeah. Which is on page, uh, let's have a look, there's a tab here, page 180. Uh, and you can look at, you can go see a picture of that in page 181. And if that's a gem, then that's what you should go for when you level up. Oh, um, yeah. Or like the Nelson, which is on page uh, 141, which is a IPSN really fast melee attacker that loves to attack and kind of jet around. And Amelia, you want to go for more of like a tough, you know, tough melee mech is my kind of my intuition. Yep. Then, you know, you, you even have a spiky mech right now. You might want to go for the Vlad, which is on page. You can find a picture of that in page 153. So when you, when you level up that character, I would go for Vlad. Vlad's pretty tight. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or, you know. Yes, good. Or you might want to go for the Baylor, which is a Horus mech on page 193. That's like a regenerating 
mech with nanobot whips and stuff mm-hmm. like cr- crazy stuff like that. So, so right now at the level we're at, we're just picking the basic stuff. But when you level up, you'll get a license, and then you can kind of get into the crazy stuff, which is mm-hmm. more unique. Yeah. Um, I like that you can pick a sleeping bag. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for your gear, so I did. Nice. <laughs> Seems reasonable. <laughs> I picked a sleeping bag, extra rations, and stims. Very wow, good. that's very, uh, very practical <laughs> of you. The sleeping yeah. bag is great because it's also uh, sealed against void, so you can you can get spaced in that thing and be fine. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> High quality uh, sleeping bag. I, I thought we are done with the character creation, but there is actually a, a section in the GM section for the first, well, actually, it might, it might even be in the player section for first session stuff to figure out the kind of group you are. Would you guys like to do that? There's some random tables in there. Um, well, I think we have a section in our discussion. Oh, part, do you really? Oh, um, awesome. To do some like groups of, we call, I call it our fanfic section. Ah, okay. Um, so I think maybe we can do that there if we're. Yeah, I think, up I for think it. that'd be pretty cool. Totally. All right. Totally. So yeah, a bunch sta- of random random tables for figuring out like uh, group identity, motivation, that kind of stuff, which is pretty fun. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. That would be the perfect spot. So for our listeners, you'll have to tune in next time for that. <laughs> yeah, and we don't have to do our closing thing because we already did that. I'm so thrown off. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is uh, not linear, non linear podcasting. Oh man. Yeah. <laughs> um. Okay, so do you want, Ryan, um, we should stop this recording and start a new one, right? Um, yes. I mean, because like, I <laughs> edit the third part, so. Yes. Um, okay. Yes. Are, is there anything else that we want to say uh, before we we head to the thing that we already did? <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it, was fun. it was fun to make characters with you guys. Thanks for letting me walk you through it. Yeah, I really like this. Um, I like the the possibilities, and it's really tickling my like nineteen nineties brain of uh, playing lots of Mech Warrior two. Oh, yeah. on the Super Nintendo, um, mm-hmm. and uh, and then Armored Core in the early aughts. I love Armored Core. Yeah, it probably shows. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The the customizations is just like, ooh, yes, more, more, Gibby. It's Here's so the good. thing: I have zero familiarity with any kind of mech genre, anything. Mm. But this was still a lot of fun. Oh, mm-hmm. nice, good. I enjoyed this. I my hope is that if you have no familiarity with it, that um, if you in the future when you're leveling up your character or thinking about place to take your character, you can just flip through the art in the mech compendium and decide based on that which things you want to be playing uh-huh. based on how cool they look, which is how I usually do things. Yeah, I took... I, yeah, I mean, I've watched as, like, the art has been released oh, on nice. Twitter yeah. and everything, too, and I'm like, oh, it's... Oh. Yeah. <laughs> that looks fun. Oh. <laughs> Very nice. There's a lot of good stuff in here. Very cool. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you both so much for joining us for our Lancer character creation episodes. Uh, Tom, do you want to go ahead and remind people where they can find you online? Uh, you can get me on my uh, webcomic site, which is kill6billiondemons.com. You can also find my comic, Kill 6 Billion Demons, published with Image Comics. There's probably a fourth volume coming out this year, I hope. Fingers crossed. Um, <laughs> you can also find me on Twitter at, uh, at Orbital Dropkick. And Miguel, where can people find you? Yeah, sure. So I'm on Twitter. You can find me at uh, the one Lopez. It's going to be capital T H E underscore capital. Uh, O-N-E underscore capital L-O-P-E-Z. Uh, you can also find Lancer and follow us on Twitter uh, uh, or follow the game on Twitter at uh, Lancer underscore RPG. Um, and you can get, uh, we mentioned earlier in the episode that you can you can find most of our stuff for free or, or buy the PDF right now if you just go to Massive, uh, uh, well, you just go to itch.io and, and search Massive Press, um, M-A-S-S-I-F. Mm-hmm. Uh, Massive Press. press. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very cool. Well, thank you for joining us, and thank you to everybody out there for listening. Uh, Please join us on the next episode for our discussion block. Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts, this show, and even our press kit. Character Creation Cast can also be found on Twitter at CreationCast or on our Discord server at discord.charactercreationcast.com. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter, and I can be found on Twitter at LordNeptune or online at lordneptune.com. 
Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast they originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used and today's guests can be found in the show notes. If you'd like to leave us a rating or review, we have links to various review platforms out there, including Apple Podcasts, in our show notes. Also, check the show notes for links to our other projects. Thanks for joining us. And remember, we find that the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We will see you next time. We gotta read some show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Character Creation Cast is hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit One Shot Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep keep going. If you enjoyed our show, visit OneShotPodcast.com, where you'll find other great shows like Backstory. Backstory is a cozy, thoughtful interview show featuring the most fascinating folks in role-playing. Join host Alex Roberts as she gets to know game designers, LARP rights, scholars, community organizers, and more. From emerging artists to seasoned veterans, guests open up about their creative process, what keeps them engaged, and their visions for the future of role-playing.